Medicare Advantage will offer you all the same benefits as original Medicare, plus dental, vision, hearing, prescription drugs, exercise, and many more. And you don't have to pay anything extra for it. Sound familiar? This is a pretty common pitch for Medicare Advantage. And in all honesty, many of these things are usually true. But there are many downsides as well that aren't as frequently advertised. Now what many people don't know is that there's actually another not as frequently advertised option, which is a Medicare supplement plan. These two options are entirely different, and that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. First and foremost, let's talk about some basic similarities and differences before we delve into the details. Medigap plans, aka Medicare supplement plans, will sometimes impose an out-of-pocket maximum, like in the cases of plans K and plan L, although many of the plans really don't need an out-of-pocket maximum because so many of the out-of-pocket costs are covered. Medicare Advantage plans will always impose an out-of-pocket maximum. For Medicare supplement plans, there may be medical underwriting depending upon when you enroll and what state you live in. With Medicare Advantage plan, there is no medical underwriting ever. With Medicare supplement plans, the costs, i.e. the benefits, are standardized, so Plan G will remain the same Plan G regardless of who your carrier is. And that's not the case with Medicare Advantage plans, although they often will offer lower deductibles, copays, and coinsurance when compared directly with original Medicare. Now, no additional benefits are offered by Medicare supplement plans. They're really just a financial solution to cover those deductibles and copays and coinsurance. On the flip side, Medicare Advantage plans very often do offer additional benefits like dental, vision, hearing, prescription drugs, and many more. Medigap plans, there are no referrals, so you can go to see any specialist without need for a referral, and there is no preauthorization. That is, of course, not the case with Medicare Advantage plans. If you have an HMO, you'll definitely need referrals, and there's always that issue of preauthorization, which is a very big issue. And finally, with Medigap plans, that works regardless of who your carrier is. If your doctor accepts original Medicare, they accept your Medicare supplement plan. And unfortunately, with Medicare Advantage plans, not only are there networks, but those networks can be extremely restrictive. So why and when would you choose a Medicare supplement plan versus a Medicare Advantage plan? Well, let's start with Medigap aka Medicare supplement plans. Because these types of plans do not offer additional benefits, and they're really just a financial solution to those gaps of original Medicare, then regardless of who your carrier is, if your doctor accepts original Medicare, then they will accept your Medicare supplement plan. This really gives you the ultimate flexibility because there are no networks. And in addition to there being no networks, there's no need for a referral to see a specialist. So you can really take control of your own healthcare and healthcare choices. Now, as I mentioned, this is a financial solution to those financial gaps in original Medicare. Because yes, original Medicare really does provide truly comprehensive and quite excellent coverage, but there are costs associated and financial gaps that you need to be aware of. This page on Medicare.gov will break down the costs associated with Part A and Part B as well. So as I mentioned, for the premium for Part A, it is $0 for most people. If you haven't met that 40 quarters yet, then you'd either pay $278 per month if you've worked between 30 and 39 quarters, or $505 per month if you've worked less than 30 quarters. Then there is the deductible and copays and coinsurance. So for Part A, the deductible in 2024 is $1,632. Now this is applied per benefit period, which it, you can really think of it like per hospital stay and 60 days thereafter. So if you were to be hospitalized more than once in a given year and you're in a new benefit period, then you would actually have to meet that deductible more than once. Then there's coinsurance and co-pays for your actual care. Inpatient stay in a hospital, days 1 through 60, no charge. But after that, those charges are rather significant. Same thing with skilled nursing facility care. And then there's home health care and hospice care as well. If we scroll down to Part B, it's a little bit easier to understand. There is a premium, but that is determined by your income. Your deductible is a once annual deductible, $240 in 2024. Once you've met that deductible, you'll be responsible for coinsurance or copays. And pretty much across the board, it's going to be 20% of the Medicare approved amount. No, of course, if you remain in the pinnacle of health, then your costs with original Medicare alone would probably be rather low. However, to be perfectly honest, at some point or another, it is likely that you will experience some type of medical crisis. And at this point, having a supplement plan in place can be rather crucial. Now, I've heard some people say that they feel that Medicare supplement plans are a waste of time and a waste of money, and you should just skip them. And I have to say, I think this is really bad advice. If you are diagnosed with a serious medical condition, 
then it is entirely possible that you could surpass those 60 days in inpatient care with no coinsurance or copay. That's because within one benefit period, you could be released and readmitted and Medicare is still keeping track of those days as you approach 60. If you need to recover in the skilled nursing facility, again, you could quite easily surpass 20 days. I did some research and it's estimated that the average skilled nursing facility stay somewhere hovers somewhere between 20 and 30 days, so already past the 20, and those copays are hundreds of dollars per day. That's not even taking into consideration that you could blast through those lifetime reserve days or have to meet more than one deductible for more than one benefit period in a given year. So if you can afford to enroll in some type of Medigap plan, any type of Medigap plan, we do highly encourage you to go ahead and enroll. There are 10 different plans to choose from and they're offered by private carriers. And even though they are offered by private carriers, as I said earlier, if your doctor accepts original Medicare, they accept your Medicare supplement plan regardless of who the carrier is. And those benefits are standardized. So the benefits offered by Plan G, for example, will be the same regardless of who your carrier is. That makes it much easier to comparison shop. First, select which Medigap plan is right for your needs, and then find a carrier that's going to offer you the lowest, best possible price, but also has a history of lower, more stable rate increases. So here are the 10 Medigap plans available. Plan A, B, C, D, F, G, K, L, M, and N. And this chart just details what benefits are offered by which plan. Now remember, Medigap plans aren't going to offer additional benefits that aren't already offered by Original Medicare. For example, Original Medicare doesn't offer dental benefits, so you're not going to see that any of these plans offer dental benefits. Instead, what they're going to do is help to cover or possibly entirely cover copays, coinsurance, and deductibles. So basically, you pay a little bit extra, but almost all of your out-of-pocket expenses or possibly all of your out-of-pocket expenses will be taken care of. So you can see that all of the plans will cover your Part A coinsurance, which is extremely helpful. Um, all the plans will cover in some capacity Part B coinsurance or copays. Plans K and L are known as cost-sharing plans. So basically they're going to contribute to these out-of-pocket costs, but Plan K will cover 50% of your cost and Plan L will cover 75%, and that's just pretty much, generally speaking, across the board. All the plans will cover the first three pints of blood in case of need of transfusion, Part A hospice care coinsurance or copays, that's very important. Skilled nursing facility care coinsurance, again, very, very important. The only plans that don't offer that is Plan A and Plan B. Your Part A deductible, that's that deductible that's applied per benefit period. So if you do need to be hospitalized more than once in a given year, then you might have to meet that deductible again, and that can certainly be very expensive. The Part B deductible, no plans that are offered to new enrollees are going to cover that Part B deductible, but that's a once annual deductible and it's not very expensive, so it's not your biggest concern. Part B excess charges, um, so basically if your doctor accepts original Medicare, then they accept the amount that Medicare is willing to pay out. However, they can choose to charge an excess charge, which is up to 15% more. Now, I wouldn't necessarily worry about these because they're not all that common and they're not even permissible in all states. The only plans that do cover Part B excess charges are plans F and G. Plan F is one of those plans that's not offered to new enrollees, but if you are looking for the most comprehensive coverage available to everyone, then that would be plan G. Foreign travel, um, almost all plans will cover that to, in some capacity, 80%. And then there's this out-of-pocket limit. You'll see it's asterisk here because it's not really applicable. Um, for example, plan F and plan G and even to an extent plan N are really going to cover all of your out-of-pocket expenses except for possibly that part B deductible. Um, plans K and plan L, because they are the cost sharing plans, they do have an out of pocket maximum, which is very helpful because if you do have major medical bills, original Medicare doesn't have any type of limit or threshold on what your spending could be. Now let's talk about the costs because of course that's extremely important when comparing any type of health insurance plan. So on medicare.gov, if you just click where it says find plans now, then it'll enable you to either preview or even enroll in the plans depending upon the type of plan that we're looking at. It's gonna ask you to put in your zip code. Now, the pricing of the plans is largely determined by the area in which you live as well as a series of other factors. Okay, I'm just gonna put in, 
Actually, no, first I wanna show you if you don't answer these questions, how the prices range. Wow, $94 to $1,600, that's a pretty wide range. 134 to 832, a little better, but still pretty crazy. 128 to about 1400. So you can see these price ranges swing wide when you don't answer these few questions up here. So I am going to put in just a little bit of information. There's also this household discount option, which is interesting. It's on the newer side. Basically, you may be able to get a household discount. There's a spouse discount and a roommate discount. Okay, but I'm going to put update prices and you'll see how that changed quite drastically. So now we're looking at 94 to 296 instead, 134 to 271. So, you know, I mean, it's still a range, but it's not 94 to 1400. So um, we do have a video talking more about Plan G and Plan N specifically, because as of right now, those are really the most popular Medigap plans with Plan F being phased out. But you can see, for example, you know, we already looked at that snapshot and you could see that something like Plan A isn't probably going to offer you the most comprehensive coverage. Those benefits are nowhere near as significant as Plan G. But let's look at the prices between 85 to 349 and between... 94 to 296. So not a huge difference in prices, at least those range of prices for those plans. However, it's all really about which carrier and plan you choose. So for example, let me go back to plan G. 85 to 349. Let's look at those policies. Here's 85, here's 100, 101. So you can see that you know, there are still several plans on the lower end of the spectrum. Remember though, the carrier is not so important if you're thinking about will a doctor accept your plan or not, because it doesn't matter who the carrier is as long as your doctor or hospital accepts original Medicare, they accept your supplement plan. What you do want to do is of course enroll in a plan with a lower end of the spectrum price as opposed to one of these much, much higher, wow, let's scroll all the way down higher end of the spectrum price, and also enroll with a carrier that has a history of lower, more stable increases. So you'll see here there's community pricing. Premiums are the same no matter how old you are. Premiums may go up because of inflation and other factors. Attained age pricing. Premiums are low for younger buyers, but go up as you get older and can eventually become the most expensive. And yeah, that can be true. And then there's one more. I don't see any up here though. Oh, there we go. Issue age pricing. Premiums are low for younger buyers and won't change as you get older. So that's something to take into consideration as well. You know, with an attained age pricing plan, you might have a really low premium now, but maybe it'll get a little bit more expensive. But that's something that your broker is going to be able to guide you regarding. Now, if we did go back and put in a totally different zip code. Okay, so I'm putting in a Florida zip code this time. Again, we're just looking at Medigap. We've got the same information, update prices. Let's see. It's a lot more expensive in Florida. Now, that being said, I mean, it's not a crazy difference in prices, although they are more expensive. But in Florida, Medicare Advantage plans happen to be extremely popular. So that could also be affecting the pricing. I will also mention that Plan G and Plan F have high deductible versions, and those are going to be extremely cost effective. In the North Carolina example, it was perhaps a little bit more evident, but if you were comparing like a high deductible Plan G versus a Plan K, um, you would see that the high deductible plan is still often much less expensive. There is that high deductible, but should you meet that deductible, then most of your services are going to be covered at that point. So this might be a good option for you if you're somebody that really needs to be cautious and considerate of the premium prices, but want to make sure that you have some type of Medicare supplement plan in place. You can actually enroll in a Medicare supplement plan year round at any point. There's no specific or set enrollment period that you have to do so within, unlike Medicare Advantage. However, it is in your absolute best interest that you enroll in the first six months after you enroll in Medicare Part B and of course turn 65. Because during this time period, you will not be subject to medical underwriting. That means that you can't be charged more or denied based on your health. Now, should you choose to enroll outside of the six month window, then you may be subject to medical underwriting, which means you could be charged more or you could be denied. And that is much more common than people think. Often people don't wish to have the added expense of a Medicare supplement plan premium when they're still in the pinnacle of health. And that's completely understandable. Very often they wish to wait until they have more expensive medical needs. 
Unfortunately, if you wait until your health is in decline, then you may find that your options are rather limited or perhaps non-existent. A brief pause to remind you that here at iHealth Brokers, we are licensed nationwide. There's absolutely no charge for our services. So if you have questions or feedback, please feel free to reach out in the comments below or at the number on the screen. And of course, we do release these videos on a weekly basis. So make sure to subscribe and please like this video as well. Time to switch gears and talk about Medicare Advantage. Basically, at this point, I want you to forget everything that you know about original Medicare and Medicare supplement plans when we're talking about Medicare Advantage. Even the name is rather misleading. Medicare Advantage plans are also known as Medicare Part C, and they must offer at least the same benefits as original Medicare. But that's where the similarities end. These plans are going to be much more similar to the health insurance that you've likely had in the past. That means that there will be networks and varying benefits and costs from plan to plan, so they are much harder to shop. Now, the two biggest issues with Medicare Advantage plans are the issues of restrictive networks and pre-authorization. So as I said, Medicare Advantage plans are much more similar to the health insurance that you've had in the past, meaning they operate within networks. Now you can't choose between an HMO and a PPO, and of course a PPO will give you much more flexibility with a Medicare Advantage plan. However, many people still report extreme difficulty finding doctors, hospitals, and specialists to accept their plan and often have to travel extensive distances to do so. But the biggest issue is that Medicare Advantage plans are managed care plans. That means between you, your doctor, and your treatment stands your health insurance carrier. So even if your doctor recommends a certain treatment or service, your insurance carrier has to approve it first. This means a lot of paperwork, a lot of follow-up phone calls, a lot of headaches, and a lot of stress, which is definitely not what you need, especially if you're currently in some type of medical crisis. It can also lead to scary big bills and denials. But let's talk about the benefits and the costs. And for that, we're going to have to look at the actual plans because the plans are all so very different. On medicare.gov, if you go over to where it says find health and drug plans, click that. I'm going to put in a Florida zip code. Just be aware that in Florida, Medicare Advantage plans tend to be more widely accepted and sometimes they offer better benefits. So Medicare Advantage, also known as Part C, find plans. Okay, so it's going to ask a few questions. Do you get help with your Medicare health or drug costs? So Medicaid, it's asking this because if you are eligible for Medicaid and Medicare, you are known as um, dually eligible. So you would be eligible for a dual eligibility special needs plan or DSNPs, and these can be a really great option. It'll also ask you if you are eligible for supplemental security income, a Medicare savings program, or extra help with drug costs. These are for Part D plans. We're just gonna put, I don't get help from any of these programs. Do you want to see drug costs when you compare plans? So as I mentioned, Medicare Advantage plans very often offer prescription drug coverage. If you are going the Medicare Advantage route, then I would highly encourage you to enroll in one that does offer prescription drug coverage. Um, we're not going to do it for right now, but if you do have your prescription drugs available, then definitely make sure you put that in because it's helpful in comparing the plans when you can compare those drug prices as well. Okay, so here are the plans available. For the zip code that we have put in, the information that we have entered, there are 60 Medicare Advantage plans available. And these filters are actually very helpful for Medicare Advantage plans. You can filter by plan benefits if some of these benefits are very, very important to you. You can filter by insurance carrier. That one is very important if you have, especially specialists that you know only take certain plans, then you may want to include that in your filtering. Drug coverage, yes please, let's include drug coverage. Okay, star ratings, special needs plans. So those would be like those DSNPs that we just spoke about. And here's view all filters if you wanna see a little bit more. So right now it is sorting by lowest drug plus premium cost since we didn't put in drug costs. It's really just filtering by premium cost. Now of those 60 plans, it dropped down to 53 because it eliminated the seven that didn't include prescription drug coverage. So. The first plan, a Humana Gold Plus plan. You see here that it says it is a $0 monthly premium. That's because you need to continue to pay for your Part B premium. Basically, the government is paying these private insurance carriers to take on your medical risk, and that's why they're able to offer you this plan at no additional monthly premium. You do need to continue to pay for Part B. 
Here are the deductibles and out-of-pocket maximums. So, so far, of course, this seems like a pretty good plan. However, we always need to take into consideration networks and pre-authorization. Let's look at all the other benefits. This is a snapshot of the most common benefits, vision, dental, hearing, transportation, fitness benefits, worldwide emergency, telehealth, over-the-counter drugs, that's a nice little perk for Medicare Advantage plans, in-home support. It doesn't offer, offer home safety devices and modifications or emergency response devices. Now, if you want to see this plan in more detail, click plan details because this is going to give you a lot more information. Okay, so you have a $0 deductible and $0 drug deductible. Sometimes you won't have a health deductible, but you will have a drug deductible or vice versa. Specialist visits. Okay, so here's where all these limits apply. Limits apply. Advanced plan approval. Yep, so that's the pre-authorization. Physician referral. That's because this is an HMO. Again, limits apply. Limits apply. It's going to say the same thing over and over again. So it looks like if we're going in network and it is approved it's a procedure that is approved and covered by this plan then you would have a zero dollar copay you could have somewhere between zero to 40 emergency care 110 dollars continue scrolling view more benefits and costs here are additional benefits and services 20 percent. that's the same as original medicare it's not offering us any drug information because we haven't put in any drug information. But it can at least, it is going to break down by its five tiers. So preferred generic, $0. Generic, $0. Preferred brand, $5. Non-preferred drug, 75 And specialty tier, 33%. That's where things get very expensive. Chemotherapy, 0 to 20% coinsurance. Hmm, okay. Limits apply. Advanced plan approval. I do wonder where this 20% coinsurance. Um, so with original Medicare, it's 20% of the cost for chemotherapy with a Medicare supplement plan. That would be covered. So I'm just curious why it's 0 to 20%. And that's where things can get a little bit confusing when it's not, you know, it, it doesn't say 0%. It doesn't say 20%. It says 0 to 20%. So I'm not really entirely certain why it would be 0%, why it would be 20%, um, you know, how you would get around that to make it no cost. Extra benefits, hearing, fitting evaluation. Well, that's nice. It does offer, you know, hearing aids. Although, remember, now hearing aids are available over the counter, so there is some significant savings available there as well. Preventative dental, always an issue. Okay, I just want to say with dental in general, yes, many Medicare Advantage plans will offer dental benefits, but if those are DHMO dental benefits, then they may not be of much use because you may struggle to find an in-network dentist that you really like. Vision, more benefits, medically approved, non-opioid pain management services, some coverage, not covered. Sadly, not covered. Very rare to find massage therapy that is covered. More benefits, star ratings. Okay, so that's just this plan. Now let's take a look. Let's see if you wanted plan type. Okay, I only want, let's say we only want to see PPOs apply. Look at this, there's also a $0 per month, not including that Part B monthly premium PPO plan. Here's that snapshot of the benefits again. Okay, so it includes most of the same benefits. Higher, there's a deductible. The um, out-of-pocket maximum is higher, but you have coverage in and out of network, which is very, very helpful. And remember, with the PPO, you do not need a referral to see a specialist. So let's just compare that. I wanna scroll down to where we were seeing limit supply, here we go. Limit supply. So advanced plan approval required. No physician approval because no referrals needed, but you still have that issue of pre-authorization. Now, if you did want to, let's say you had a couple different plans that you were really interested in. Let's wait for this to load, I guess. If you had a couple different plans you wanted to compare, you can compare up to three. I'm just picking three just so that you can see this. Then you compare the plans and it's going to load them all right next to each other so that you can easily compare the costs and benefits. Now an added benefit for Medicare Advantage plans is that there is no medical underwriting, not at any point. That means you can't be denied or charged more based on your health 
unlike Medicare supplement plans. You do, however, need to enroll either when you first become eligible, so that is the seven month window surrounding your 65th birthday, three months before, the month of, and three months thereafter, or during the AEP, which is every year from October 15th to December 7th. There's also the MAOEP, which is the Medicare Advantage open enrollment period. And this is not to sign up for a new plan, but rather to switch Medicare Advantage plans if you're currently enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan, or to switch back to original Medicare. And the MAOEP is from January 1st to March 31st. Now, bearing all of that in mind, most of our clients do choose Medicare supplement plans. However, if you would like to learn more about Medicare Advantage plans, I suggest you take a look at this playlist below. And also, I would like to make you aware of a recent trend with more and more hospitals dropping Medicare Advantage plans. That's something that you want to take into consideration when making your decision as well. As always, please feel free to reach out at the number on the screen or in the comments below if you have any questions or feedback. We would love to hear from you. And please make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.